Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote, and this is a Unified Dream Machine Pro. Now, it says here, and it, I'm sorry if this is hard to read, it says Enterprise Security Gateway, Gateway and Network Appliance with 10 Gigabit SFP Plus. Now, half of that is definitely true, the, but the part that I think is a little bit confusing, and this is totally on Ubiquity, is that I'm not really sure that this is an Enterprise Security Gateway. Um, it's not exactly clear where they position this device that, that we'll call it UDM Pro against some of the other stuff that's in the, the lineup. Um, and the reason why I say that is so I have a USG Pro or Uni Unify Security Gateway, but this doesn't quite slot into the same place that that does because there are things that it can do that this can't do. An example of that is that my USG Pro can do DNAT rules, and this can't, at least not right now. And some of that has to do with the uh, operating system that this runs. This runs a, a new operating system that is not based on EdgeOS, which is what the USG is based on. And that's, it's understandable that the way that you do some of these things is different between the USG or USG Pro and the UDM or UDM Pro. But given the lack of some pretty basic features uh, from a firewall perspective, I don't think that it's really fair to call this an enterprise security gateway because enterprise needs to do that kind of thing and this just can't, um, at least right now. Uh, I contacted Unify or Ubiquity support about it. Um, they didn't say the right now part, they just said, well, actually, it was a pretty uh, interesting discussion. They just said, no, it can't do that. And they did not provide any viable workarounds or suggestions on when it might be able to do that. So it may never be able to do that, but I would hope uh, that eventually it will. Uh, some of the other things that make this not quite enterprise worthy is that this comes with its own Unify controller. Um, but it, it won't work with any other Unify controller, only the one that's on here, which is odd. And certainly from an enterprise level, if you have one Unify controller that you have all of these different sites managed through, um, you can't use this device with that because this only works with its Unify controller, which, you know, is just, it blows my mind because the, the the value of the Unify branding is that all the Unify kit works together, but this doesn't work with all the other Unify kit. It only works with itself. It's a standalone Unify controller. Um, it has Unify Protect, which is pretty neat. It's for uh, video surveillance. Um, I haven't gotten around to seeing if, I don't know why this would break using another Unify Protect device or the older Unify video on a different server. Um, I don't expect that it will. I intend to use the Unify Protect that's on here. That's one of the things that I like about it is that Unify Protect is supposed to be much better than Unify Video and Ubiquity is kind of end of life Unify Video. Um, moving past the negative stuff, and I, I guess we'll get into, hopefully we'll get into more of that when um, have a, a, a deeper look at what the device can do. Um, but let's move past it for now. This has a 1.3 inch touchscreen. It has eight gigabit RJ45 LAN ports. It has a gigabit RJ45 WAN port. It has two 10 gig SFP plus ports. Um, if your, which actually is a, a pretty nice enterprise feature if your uh, ISP can provide you with a 10 gig SFP in, or I guess if you're doing site to site, um, that's another option. You could use uh, fiber on your own without going through an ISP. That, that's a, a potential use case for that as well. Um, it's not a use case that I intend to use. I mostly bought this for it, its claimed ability to do IPS or intrusion prevention uh, at the line speed that my internet is. 
and that's one gig uh, fiber that we have here. So the USG Pro is limited at about 300 megabits, so I was hoping, and we'll have to verify that, that I'll be able to get over that, um, hopefully, all the way up to one gig. Um, if not, we'll definitely uh, find out because it's one of the first things that I'm going to test. So let's get this open and have a look at it and then get it set up. So we have a box here, and I'm assuming that this is the power supply, but we'll get into that in a second. Uh, some foam packaging, and sorry, this is out of focus. Let's fix that. Oops. All right, so get our focus back for this distance. So let's look at what's in here. So standard three prong power cord. The hardware that we'll use to put on the mounting brackets, which are right here, because this is going to get rack mounted. And Oh yeah, so this is all just hardware, and these are probably the hard drive screws, and then some feet if you're gonna not if you're gonna stack it instead of rack mount it. So this is actually quite large and quite heavy for what it is. Okay, so on the back, we have power import, input, and then it says USB, USP, sorry. USP connect, which I think is, they have a um, power supply uh, coming out at some point, which you can daisy chain a bunch of Unify, uh, devices and then it powers it instead of using the um, standard 120 volt. Well, actually it says it looks like it has switching. So it's 120, 240, 50, 60. So you'd be able to use this um, pretty much anywhere in the world. On the front we have our SFP ports, the WAN, um, our 8 gigabit LAN ports, and then over here is our LCD screen which we will reveal now obviously it's not on so it's not relevant here is our hard drive slot get this out So push in, and then, ah, so it's just like a regular hot swap bay. Although, I'm pretty sure that um, Ubiquiti in the uh, manual for this says that it is not hot swappable. Um, can't see in here because there's no lighting, but there's, I can see in there's a fan, a very small fan probably 40 or 50 mil all the way de deep in here. I don't, yeah, that's, I'm gonna have to get a flashlight to show that. Um, one of the things that does frustrate me is that in this space, it would be great if there was another hard drive bay, even if it only supported two 2.5 inch drives instead of one three and a half or three and a quarter, whatever, the size of a hard drive, three and a half inch hard drive. Uh, because there's no redundancy here, and if one of the, if your drive fails, you lose all your recordings, and there again, that would be a nice enterprise feature. Although, they do have a four bay uh, Protect MVR coming out at some point if it's not already out. So, let's get a hard drive in here. Uh, 
Um, it's worth noting that I wasn't able to find any specification from Ubiquity around what kind of hard drive you should use in here for the um, Protect and like what spec it, it should have. So I just kind of went with what they had. They, they expect an uh, 8 terabyte, 7200 RPM drive with 256 uh, megabytes of ca megabytes of cache, which is what this Seagate Ironwolf drive is. And I imagine they probably use an, a Seagate Ironwolf as well, um, or you know something similar to that. So it looks like there's only one screw hole. Okay. So let's grab a screw. All right. So that's that installed. Now, as I mentioned before, this is going to get rack mounted. So let's throw those on. All right, so that's rack plates on, the rack mounts on, hard drive installed. Now it's time to get it into the rack. UDM Pro is racked and um, it's on. This is the LCD touchscreen. And as you can see, when I turn it on, it turns on, or when I touch it, it turns on. You navigate by swiping, and then you can go into the individual settings. In network, you have throughput, clients, and the version of Unify that you're running. To get back to the main screen, you either swipe up or swipe down. And then you go through to the settings where you get brightness, color. Ooh, let's make that orange. Much better. And then the fan control. And then this is the temperature at which you would uh, have it turn on, I guess. And then about gives you some system stats, the IP address of your WAN and your LAN, the temp current temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit, the uptime, hardware revision, and the current firmware. So that's about all there is to that. It will turn off after some amount of time. I don't really, I haven't figured out what that amount of time is. Uh, and that's the touchscreen. So now we're gonna quickly walk through the setup for the UDM Pro. Um, you have to be connected to the internet to do this. I don't believe you can do it any other way. Uh, and you have to have a UI.com account. Um, if, you are, if you have a Ubiquiti setup or Unify setup already, chances are you already have one of these. So it's not really a big deal, but you do need to be connected to the internet. So that's something that you need to be aware of. The uh, first run experience is pretty good, assuming that you already have a UI account. Um, It'll ask you when you want to update. Uh, it will force itself to update the firmware on the device and it will conduct a speed test to determine um, how fast your internet is. So I tried to use the app as they suggest to set up the device, but that didn't go very well. So I just went out to the browser and went to 192.168.1.1 like every other uh, consumer oriented router would surface itself at and immediately went in to try to restore the backup from my Unify controller onto the UDM Pro. Unfortunately, that didn't go very well. Um, I have not been able to restore any backup, either the full backup or a migration only backup onto the UDM Pro. Um, I've contacted support about this and they weren't very helpful. Um, basically, the tech, the tier one tech I spoke with said they didn't know what was going on. They would escalate it, but it's been over 24 hours and I haven't heard anything back yet. So I'm not confident that we're going to get a, or that I'm going to get a timely resolution to this. It kind of shocks me the state that Ubiquiti shipped the thing in. Um, clearly, this is not a baked product. Uh, it's hard for me to recommend that you would go out and buy one given all of the things that are going on with it and then especially the fact that it can't do one of the things that is incredibly fundamental to its basic operation which is to restore a backup from a unified controller uh, so welcome to the beta group